how do you determine whether a stock is undervalued or overvalued. So today we'll talk about the simplest way. So today the topic is about the simplest way to know whether a stock is undervalued. There are actually many ways. So let's start with the simplest way. And I would like to use analogies and let's introduce this guy to you called Ashton. Okay, so Ashton, imagine that he has a house which is worth $1.5 million. And he also have cash worth $500,000 in the bank. And this will form his assets. Okay, uh, at the same time, he didn't fully pay his house using all his uh, cash. So he took some bank loan and there's an outstanding amount of another $500,000. So that forms the liability for uh, Ashton in this case. And usually people ask, what's the net worth, right? So net worth essentially is having the assets minus a liability that will give you, in Ashton case, 1.5 million. Because 1.5 plus 5, uh, 0.5 million, that gives you 2 million. And minus 0.5 million of mortgage, uh, he'll get 1.5 million net worth. Right, and imagine that uh, Ashton is for sale hypothetically, okay, in the market, and he's priced at one million dollars. So you can actually buy him and own his assets, and of course his liabilities, everything as a package for one million dollars. In that case, if you know that he's worth one point five million dollars, okay, and you're only paying one million dollars, in so we can safely say that Ashton is actually priced in an undervalued uh, kind of way. So stocks can also be seen as uh, uh, using assets and liability to assess the net worth of a stock. So we don't use net worth to, uh, uh, to determine whether a stock is undervalued. We call it book value. And so it's actually the accounting method to determine whether uh, how much the company is worth. So it's known as book value. So what essentially the simplest way is to determine whether the price is below the book value of the company. Okay, the share price, whether it's below the book value of the company. So if, let's say, you use this ratio called the PB ratio or price to book value ratio, if let's say this ratio is less than one, essentially you're saying that the price is less than the book value. Okay, And this is the most simplest way to determine whether a stock is undervalued or not. And of course, uh, stocks that passes this criteria tend to have problems that's aligned with them. So why would a stock be undervalued? If a good stock is unlikely to be undervalued, right? It should not be selling below its net worth, okay? Especially growth stock, which investors expect that the company is worth more in the future than what it is currently now. So investors are willing to pay more than what its current worth is. So which means good stocks tend not to be uh, below price to book ratio, okay? So likely, stocks that passes this kind of criteria tend to have problems and they may be in unsexy businesses uh, or they may even be in sunset industry and they may even incur certain losses over the years and they may be smaller companies or even bad management. So there are tons of problems that associate with this kind of uh, undervalued stocks and generally investors tend to shun them because uh, they don't like the problems that are associated with uh, these companies. But that said, right, uh, researchers have done a study that if you buy very cheap stocks, which are very low price to book stocks, right, your returns are actually higher, regardless of all the problems that persist in these companies. So for example, one study that they have done uh, was that bottom 10% price to book ratio, that means your cheapest 10%, okay, versus the top 10% by price to book ratio, that means your most expensive uh, stocks by price to book ratio. Okay. So when they compare the returns over several years, all right, they found that on the average, if you have bought the cheapest stocks by the lowest price to book ratio, okay, you'll gain 1.6% returns per month. As compared to if you have bought the most expensive, you only gain 0.6% per month. Okay. So it's almost three times more returns if you have bought the cheapest stock by the price to book ratio itself. Okay, so I hope that uh, today's uh, session uh, you learn how to determine the simplest way to determine whether a stock is undervalued. And historically, based on research, it's also proven that such stocks deliver high returns. So, uh, as a matter of fact, do not be concerned about some of the problems that you may face uh, when looking at these companies. Right? Uh, some of them may not be permanent issues, like uh, losses can be temporal. So, which means there are 
uh, opportunities for you to find these undervalued stocks and gain much higher returns over the long run. So I hope today uh, is a good lesson for you guys and you can use it for your own investment.